Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, I'm Debbie, and I'm here to t help you navigate the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. And today I want to talk about why dating is like working at a law firm. At least that was my experience. Um, I'm an attorney. I started practicing law when I was 25. I was one of the youngest associates at a predominantly male law firm. And it sucked. Took me a few years to realize it, but it sucked. Um, basically, it was very hierarchical. They were mostly male associates, and their job was to herd the younger associates and create a sort of wolf pack so that they were on the top and you were sort of clearly on the bottom. And some of the ways that they did this was by uh, delegating their work. Can you take this for me? Oh, it's really advantageous if you help me out. Even though most of us really had plenty of our own work. But somehow it was designed so that you were sort of under them in some way. Um, the conversations were sort of subtly insulting. There was always more, more superiority. Um, these folks took better vacations. They didn't just say parachute. They did extreme parachuting. Their children were more accomplished. They were on better sports teams. I don't have kids. I couldn't play. Um, and it was harder at a professional level, too, seriously, because in meetings, people didn't ask for my opinions. And I was real young. I didn't speak up. And this was before the sort of lean in era. Uh, it was difficult also to sort of get in with these folks because, you know, when they weren't being um, sort of trying to establish the wolf pack, the men had conversations behind closed doors where they talked about women a little bit differently uh, and, and away from ears that might might cause any kind of litigation like sexual harassment or discrimination. They didn't really let us in. So deals were made pretty much over golf courses or fantasy football. It felt very much like a secret society from which I was excluded. But when I tried to play, I was sort of put down, you know, did I want to take this job for them? Would I want to work under them? Well, no, no, I didn't. And what was really dis discouraging, you know, I retired from law when I was 40, is 10 years later when I started dating again, I felt like I was in the same damn law firm. Except instead of uh, male associates or colleagues, these were supposed to be potential boyfriends. Uh, people were thrilled to tell me that as a naive widow, I was expecting too much. This was a different world be satisfied with what you get. People don't really have serious relationships. I met too many guys who put down my choices. They would never live in the suburbs. They would never live in a house like mine. Why the hell don't I move? Uh, maybe I would like to support them and some of their ventures. They, some of them really uh, weren't living terribly well, although that didn't seem to stop them from putting down the way I was living. And it was really disheartening. Uh, for example, you know, I was dating this one guy who was in his early 60s and, and apparently trying to screw everything that moved under the guise of, of being uh, adventurous, even though I, I think it was just a return to his teenage years and getting past being a geek in high school. And he walked through my house and looked at my queen size bed and said, oh, you need to get a king size bed. You're not a little girl anymore. And, you know, I was a wife of 32 years and seen his husband through, her husband through cancer. Um, he was apparently lighting up the dating apps. Not impressive. Uh, another example was this guy I was dating, PhD. I was so impressed. And he was the one who was always telling me I was off. You know, in modern relationships, people really didn't spend a lot of time together. He was very busy, and that's to my advantage because he was so uh, successful. But none of that really was. And at one point he arranged and said, well, we take a weekend apart, a weekend together. Sorry, we're going to fly to Vancouver together. And I said, okay. And then, you know, his schedule was so crazy that by the time he got through, oh, you could meet me there. I have a job interview here. I was down to flying one night to be with him for what was a very expensive booty call. And when I called him on it, he said, oh, well, you're not really adventurous. You've only known your suburban home. You know, you wouldn't understand this. But I think I understood when my time was being treated poorly. I think I understood when I was being disrespected uh, as a potential partner. So I think that was really hard in, in terms of dating land. Um, you know, and when I would end things with folks, I'd always get these arguments. Well, you don't know. You know, I really am great. You just don't understand it. 
the fact that I'm overscheduled means I'm really busy and you, you wouldn't want somebody who's more boring. You know, it was kind of like the software developers who say, well, it's not a bug, it's a feature. But, you know, I'm, I'm a widow, but I'm not a moron. I can tell when my software isn't loading. If someone's trying to get me to pay for a lot of stuff or doesn't have a lot of time to spend with me, which was something that was very high on my priority list, I can tell that this is a bug. I can tell this isn't going to work. And it was funny, you know, these folks, it was even hard to break up with, of course, because it was a hierarchy. And, you know, you certainly don't want to date someone who makes themselves feel better by making you feel bad, by, by putting you down to show how important they are. You know, that, that's, that's not a relationship. That's psychophancy. Um, and sometimes with these guys, I must say, okay, this is bad. There's the scene in Animal House where the, where the, cute, the cute sorority girl uh, has dated this guy who's really full of himself and he just thinks he's a ladies man and she breaks she never wants to see him again and he says well why not i'm wonderful and she says it wasn't that great and that's kind of what i wanted to say to some of these guys hey it wasn't that great people aren't territories we can leave at any time so if you meet one of these negative fellows i call them the law firm guys who are sort of subtly putting you down and trying to show how clever they are, in fact, more clever than you, and how your choices really aren't that great, I have one piece of advice, run. You don't wanna be with someone like that. It's patronizing, it's unpleasant, and these days it's patriarchal and people should know better. You know, one of the best traits we can have in the people we surround ourselves with are folks who make us feel good about ourselves and who make us feel good about our choices and who are constructive in helping us to be better versions of ourselves. So if you're not, if the people you're meeting aren't like that, don't waste your time. Dating isn't a law firm. You have a lot more control. These people aren't your employers. There is no hierarchy. I hope this helped navigate truly the cesspool that is middle-aged dating. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.